What's up, historians? Welcome back. Historically Haunted Season 3. Oh, that's right. I shaved my beard. I've had my beard for like four years, and I just trimmed it in my first show with no for my beard trim. But anyway, it's not about me. I digress. We have some great guests coming on. I've been following these fucking cats for a long time on Facebook. About a year now. Not super long. I dig them, man. They're horror movie nuts. They're Jason Voorhees fans. Um, they're filmmakers. They're actors. A whole bunch of good stuff going on. And maybe you guys don't know them, but I hope you will now. Um, we're going to bring them on without further ado. We have uh, Montavious. I hope I said that right. Uh, Montavious. And we have Maurice. And they are here um, right now. Oh, my phone is not working for me. They are with Flashtainment, Flash Entertainment Productions. Uh, um, let's bring them on. Enough time. Uh, what is going on? Right to the screen now. What's ah? There you are. <laughs> hey, how are we doing? What's up, guys? What's going on? Yeah. What is going on, everybody? <gasps> Fucking cats got me worried. I'm like, where are they? We get two minutes. And you guys like, poof, we're here. I'm like, ah, shit. Never, never count them out. Never count them out. Love the background there. Um, so, all right, Montavious. I said that right. Montavious Parker. I said that name right. Yes, sir. Perfect. Actor. Perfect. All right. And Maurice McCoy, Jr., director, actor extraordinaire, correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. And we get the other two, um, the Miss and the Mr., but maybe they'll pop on later. That's cool for now. Um, we'll just chat us three. Um Awesome, man. I dig it. I started following you guys, I think, from a mutual friend. I think that Janice Williams dude, who's a horror movie guy. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah, and I think I saw one of his posts, and he had something he shared about your movie with Jason. You guys did a fan film, and you got one coming out. Oh, I should I had it written down. Three three, three evil ones, right? Uh, That was the from evil a three. former... Yeah. Oh, the evil three. Yeah, that was from uh, CJ Vecchio, yeah. who is yeah. here in Chicago, yeah. who is doing a yeah. merger of... Yeah. Uh, Jason Voorhees, Leatherface, and my get a heckler. <laughs> we always get someone's kid or someone's dog fucking in the whole thing up. We're all good. Don't worry about it. If you guys are cool, I'm cool. Um, go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. Keep talking. We get the kid interrupting. <laughs> oh, he, I think he's going to be interrupted because he always does this anytime I go live, unfortunately. Oh, of course. Give him a mic, man. Put on a phone. The kids will be right there. Mom. Um, check it in. Hello, Jean Tewksbury. Jean is a wildcat chaser in Maine. She chases pumas and mountain lions and stuff. She's a cryptozoologist. She's checking in. She says hello to everybody. Hello, Adam and Guest from author um, Drunzen. You can chat a lot. Betsy Brown. She's laughing. Hey, Betsy. Betsy rolls with the searchers, Shane Pittman and them. So anyway, let's get right to it. Um, What got you guys into horror movies? It must be like, I mean, you guys must be 80s, 90s kids like me. You kind of grew up watching horror, I guess. Well, I'm a definitely 90s baby. I was born in 94. Jesus. You're a young one. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless I get on Montavious case. <laughs> in, in myself, personally, I was born in 95. However, I got into horror because, uh, you know, I don't tell people this a lot, but as a kid, I was, uh, my dad was a Pentecostal preacher. So I had to hide the fact that I was into horror and, I just got a love for it because I think the first horror movie I've ever seen was uh, Tales from the Hood. And oh, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you that question. What, what was your first one? Tales from the Hood classic, the skeleton with the sunglasses and oh, so you yeah. almost did it as a taboo, not a taboo, but like, oh, if it's not good for me, I kind of want to see it. <laughs> exactly. It was more like, more like a rebellious type of thing. And so like it started from there and I'm like, oh, wow, like this, this is awesome. Like this is something like I want to do forever. Right. So it started yeah. from there and then. It went into other things. So, yeah, that's just a little small tidbit of how I got into it. it well, it, like you say, and, and, not to, and to touch on that, and of course, we're going to go right to Maurice right next, but it's it's a different art form. And I think at first it's like blood, guts, gore. But if you really look at it, there's a lot that goes into the horror movies between the script, the makeup, the, you know what I mean? The, yeah, it's quite an art form, I think. There's nothing like it. There really isn't. Yeah, I mean, and you have to think, too, that genre has really saved film, you know, because, I mean, from you name it, the only movies that are doing numbers right now in theaters are horror movies. Absolutely. I mean, so, yeah, you know, Maurice is like, yeah, see, it, dude, it's Michael hey. Myers, whether you like it or not, him dying was the biggest fucking thing since what? Since what? I mean, you know? Go ahead, Maurice. You know, you know, who's, uh, you know Damien Leone, he's taking over right now. He's taking over right now in the horror industry. Terrifier, or uh, uh, Art the Clown there. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, See, oh, and, sorry, and, um, and with that too, you know, I'm definitely rocking the shirt. Uh, I so love with, it. <laughs> so with that as well, uh, Damien's a very humble guy, a very humble human being. And, you know, people like to compare him to like today's Wes Craven, right? So, and respectfully, you know, he tries to say, you know, 
I love I love it. Like he loves the fact that people are trying to compare him to that, but he's not there just yet. He feels like, but I think that's you know, I think Damien definitely. I hate to say this, but like I think Damien really put eyes back on indie indie filmmaking, uh, especially indie horror filmmaking. Even though there's been a bunch of great films before Terrifier, it's just that now people are like, okay. People are paying attention, especially with the strike that's going on. You know, right, right, right. Indie is so. I think people don't realize the ones that stick in your brain the most, the Evil Deads, the Friday the Thirteenth, the original Halloween. They didn't cost shit. They were independent. They were underground. No one. They weren't big Scream Five. You know what I mean? It was very much. That's kind of the the big one stick in your brain. Evil Dead was what thirty grand it cost them to film something like that. Yeah, but, and I think I, I mean? Halloween at the time was. Uh, maybe like 150, maybe 200 thousand, which was still a lot of money. But yeah. respectfully, that's still an indie film in in today's society, you know. So, yeah, fucking a, you know your shit. What say you, Maurice? Uh oh, what say you, Maurice? What got you into all this stuff? Uh, oh, real quick, my girlfriend Heather says, uh, yeah, Tales from the Hood uh, was amazing. Absolutely, yes. I have, I'm pretty sure I got that on DVD. <laughs> well, for me, uh, my love, my too. love started. <laughs> My love started with uh with the OG Halloween in 2008. I believe I was 10 year old when I saw the very first film. <laughs> Gotta love the kiddos. It's classic, dude. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. It probably bothers him more than me. He's like, ah, it's all good. Go find a chocolate bar, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. He, 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 went, he was just sitting here watching Little Bill. Now he's all over my area. Oh yeah, it's that's the. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, There's a horror movie it itself right there. Kids part two. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But for me, it was Halloween, 1978. Um, I, it was a fascination on you know, uh, a grown ass man stalking. Well, not grown girl, but a grown ass man stalking, being a babysitter stalker in a way. Like for me, you know, as I grew up, I was babysitting kids myself. I'm like, you know. What is it like to have someone stalking you or coming after you? But literally not alone, he's not only coming after you, he's coming after you because you're his you're his bloodline. So he wants to kill you all before he said, Oh, now I can go finally sit on a rest and die of old age. I have to kill you all because that's what the evil spirit of me is telling me to do. It literally kill off all my family members. But if you need to take a moment, then of course he's, he's good. You're good. Yeah, it's all good, man. It shit happens. Don't feel like you got egg on your face. If you want to, I don't know, man, tie him to the radiator or something. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> oh, no, I got, dude, I got people over there, cats and dogs and kids climb all over him. It's not the first time. You're all good. I can hear you. But if you, if you got to take a minute, it's all good too. Um, so that's cool, man. You guys have more or less made a living out of this. And, and, and you, you keep, I mean, where do you guys like see yourself just trying to get into this more and more, trying to develop and, and, and learn? I mean, you can never well, start learning, I guess. Uh, you guys seem to know your shit. <laughs> so, so for me, I'm starting off with, you know, just doing a few fan films just to get my feet wet into the director's game and see, like, where it takes me because uh, I do have original scripts I am working on. Oh, yeah, yeah. That'll be uh, that later down the line once I build my fan base from, from the horror uh, from the horror family to the uh, sci-fi family to the children and kids family. So I have a lot. Yeah, it's Khalil. Fucking sugar is a hell of a drug, man. I tell you. It, it, and it's, it's the most big thing on the planet Earth, man. <laughs> <laughs> what about I mean, You got Pennywise in back of you. You got Scream. You got, oh, man. I love that. You got, man, I, I got everything. I think, but I think for me, um, so I'm, I'm not making a living um, off of, off of this yet. More or less, I'm just a, I'm just a fan of horror itself, and I'm a fan of film, right? So, any way I can be involved in. To, Cause like again, I'm going back to like my kind of my life story. Um, for so long as a kid, I I was never really bullied per se, but I had to hide the fact that I was that weird kid or the weird black kid that was was into horror and you know crazy things. So uh, for me to be an adult now, I get to be that little kid I've always wanted to be. Yeah, so that's why I gravitate so strong to you know all the things you see around me and. I mean, this is just fun for me, man. I'm literally living my dream right now. Uh, uh, I get to meet people and, you know, talk oh. horror. And, you know, I get to meet people like like yourselves that I get to just I get to live my dream, man. So right now it's just a ultimate 
fan dream uh, to do horror movies like uh, not to take away from Maurice and you know the movie that we're doing but uh, I was recently in a movie called The Dead Place with yeah, David yeah, Howard yeah. Thornton and I was actually killed by David Howard Thornton so oh, dope yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I gotta look I'm, that up. Oh, thank you. Definitely send me the link after if you can. I'd love to. I'm always, yeah, I, sure. yeah. it hasn't came out yet. Uh, it's we're aiming for uh, this coming fall. So, along with Stream, I don't know if you heard if you guys heard about Stream yet. Uh, but Stream is you know, Michael Levy, Jason Levy, the uh, Fuzzling Boys from, from Terrifier, Terrifier mm-hmm. 2. Um, so their film is coming out in October ish, and so is The Dead Place, which has David Howard Thornton. Actually, he's in both films, but yeah, I, I get killed, man. So David is probably like, <laughs> so David is probably like today's Freddy Krueger, if you will. I don't want to offend anybody out there, but the guy plays a clown, you know, in Terrifier. So in the Dead Place, he plays this this demon, and to be killed by somebody who was considered today's, you know, Robert England is amazing. Absolutely. That's a dream come true. So only fucking horror fans, only fucking horror fans can say something sick like that, and it'd be like an honor, you know. You know if I smoke? Oh, for sure. For sure. Well, legal in hey, hey, Adam, Adam, real quick, real quick. Uh, is it possible if you just resend the link to uh, Bugsy Hopless uh, Facebook page? Oh, yeah. he's right here. Yeah, he's right Adam, right okay. No yeah. visual, but. Uh, hit the camera link if you want to come on. Some people don't want to. Hey, dude, your kid's a star. People want to see the kid, not you fucking guys. Look at this. Your kid's a star. Don't apologize. <laughs> your kid's an awesome. You get him on the camera. Like, you know, camera. Um, so, Bugsy, what's going on, my friend? Uh, nothing much. Give me a moment. I had some problems um, getting the camera working, so give me a second. I'll just... Yeah, no worries. Um, I'll get to you in a minute. I I, I kind of want to um I kind of want to get to the the audience real quick. They got a question. We'll start with Maurice and kind of go down. There's the little guy. What's up, buddy? Um, the question is, uh, who is your favorite slasher, guys? That's from Dylan Wagner. What's up, Dylan from Chicago? Uh, uh, what's paranormal? Right, Ooh, I want to smoke some Ooh, Ooh, my favorite slasher. Favorite slasher has to be. You got to go OG here. Tony Todd, Candyman, favorite slasher, hands down. I'm sorry. Oh, 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 so okay, okay. So you got to do Chicago, huh? <laughs> um, the the OG uh, Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my favorite movies. Okay, okay. Respect, okay. respect. So you're gonna go. You're probably Freddy then. You're Kruger. If that's your boy. You like Freddy? I like Freddy. He has a good sense of humor. Oh, <laughs> six sense of humor. You mean Bugsy? <laughs> oh no, no, I said good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What say you, Montavious? Uh, so I th- I thought I just answered. I'm sorry, but uh, Candyman, uh, Candyman, Tony. Oh, Todd. you did say Candyman. Oh, you're right. You did. Yeah. Favorite slasher. Uh, for me, it was like to see uh, a black man in that realm of like horror was like amazing for me. So he was the first real, I think, black horror guy. Really, right? I mean, yeah, he must be, probably is. Yeah. yeah and- and and on and on the contrary to that, you really can't name another one right now that has such a pivotal role like Candy. No, no, um, he didn't have a leading role, but I met Ken Foray from uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, and uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Ken Foray is pretty cool. Um, Maurice, what about you, man? Who's your favorite slasher, dude? Of course, Jason, right? Oh shit! You get the nice sign by Ken Foray. Yes, oh. sir. <laughs> So, so for me, uh, my my awesome favorite slasher guy. I'm gonna go with the guy who spooked me the most as a kid. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Mike Myers. Michael Myers, of course. You're cheating on Jason. Oh, it's, not, it's not cheating if it was consensual. <laughs> <laughs> you bastard. Um, I like him. Like you said earlier, the silent killer, the adult killer. The ch- he's kind of a not a pedophile, but he just he wants to kill the kids, and he just he's he's slightly handicapped in the brain, but he's. I'm almost emotionless, almost a real serial killer with a mask. It's very eerie. Um, yeah, Michael Myers. Well, I, 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 bl- I blame the mask. Take out the mask, he was a regular human being. Put on a mask, he's cursed. Amen. Aren't we all? We all wear a mask, Wendy, metaphorically speaking. But so, but here's the argument, though, right? Jason, classic. Well, for Friday the 13th, classic. Uh, yeah. What's up, uh, Mr. Taylor? Um, uh, Freddy Krueger, classic. Right, but I, I guarantee you, still to this day, no one has said Candyman three times in the mirror. I promise oh, you, I did that already. Oh, oh, oh. I did that already. <laughs> oh, bullshit. 
You liar. Did, no did way. You really? I still to this day have not done that. I'm I'm terrified. I can't. So can't you do. never done it. You never done it as a child growing up and I'm not doing party sleepovers. I would never. I would never do something that crazy. I can't. <laughs> what? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. What about Bloody Mary? Nope. That either. Oh man. Oh. Oh, Tony shit. Maybe Todd we should get some packets on here. Tony Todd rules. Freddie all day. Kara fell up. Hello, Kara from yeah. Chicago. No. Candyman was the one with that fucking hook, oh, you... dude. Way before oh, I knew you did last okay. summer. Okay, that's great. So nobody's a Michael Myers fan. That's okay. That's, that's, that's understandable. Ah, uh, <laughs> hey, the underdog's good, dude. The underdog's good, my friend. Um, so uh, real quick, I want to shift gears to the guy who showed up late, who we can't see his face. Bugsy, dude, what are you? You're a musician, so you must be a you, you, you rap. I take it, uh, jazz or R and B. I do bluegrass. Shut the front door. That's fucking. Are you joking with me? Baby. Ah, you <laughs> I can hear I can hear a banjo in the background. I'm starting to get scared. Here, though. Boom, too. I think I'm about to go get on cam right now. Hold on. I might I might get double logged in. I'm not sure how this thing works. Hold on. Now, if you actually do bluegrass, like I love bluegrass. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, real quick, uh, I'm going to wait for him real quick. I want to bring this to the screen so everybody can see. Can you guys see the flash right there? Flash Tainment Productions. Oh, yeah. Good. There's some stuff right there. There's the Escaped from Hell, the fan film, Friday the 13th, Jason Voorhees, Reapers Underground. There's my man right there. Bunch of good stuff in the works. So check them out, guys, on Facebook. You all on YouTube and stuff, too? Oh yeah, we are on YouTube at Flash and Product LLC. We we basically on all we basically have every social media from Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, um, and TikTok. Holy shit. You guys are uh all over the place. That's good though. You gotta spread the spread it everywhere so people more see you can be. I watch all the Halloween, but someone about something about Cambrina made it too real. What's Cambrina? Am I lost there? Oh yeah. uh, no, no, Cabrini Green. That's um, I'm a that's actually a neighborhood that I actually work in present day, real life. I work in Cabrini Green as a security officer, so I've been told all the stories, even from the film story to the actual story. So yeah, you guys are fucking obsessed. Uh, there's Bugsy. What's up, dude? You get the Playboy jacket. Look at you. <laughs> What's up, brother? What's, up, what's, what's up? going on? Hanging loose. Uh, we're checking in. We got a lot of people checking in saying hello. Hello, George. Good evening. Look at that. Get the nun there. A bunch of, I told a bunch of people I got to get some horror fans coming on. We get some directors, some <laughs> actors. Um, so so what got you all? Bugsy, let's start with you since you're late to the party. Um, what started you wanting to act in movies or horror movies? Or it's like Mont Davis said, get excited to die <laughs> or get chased. Like I, I have a background in acting. I was, I was on the Cosby show and a few other syndicated things, uh, a few of straight to DVD movies, things of that sort. But I, I mainly work in entertainment a lot. So it just comes naturally. So that's how that happened. Wow. Impressive. I should have done my fucking homework. I tried. <laughs> I appreciate it pretty good. I sent you a friend request, but it was a couple of days ago. Uh, hey, what do you all think about the indigenous, uh, indi in in insidious Insidious. <laughs> Oh, uh, I haven't seen the new one. Um, the franchise is pretty nice. I like it. It's entertaining. Okay. Okay. Well, all I can say that that franchise gave me some nightmares. I do not want to revisit. My girlfriend will watch it alone. <laughs> I have a hard time finding things that's really scary nowadays. I laugh at the well, most stuff people are afraid of. Yeah, exactly. See, I think for me, for for the Insidious franchise, it's great. Now, the first three. Definitely. Now I did go see, you know, the the last one, uh, the Red Door. Uh, I think it wrapped very well. Uh, did it? I wish we got more of. I don't want to give any spoilers away for people who haven't seen it. Uh, but I wish we got more of 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 the demon, you know, and like its origin. I'm okay with it. I'm I'm not mad. I'm not complaining. I just wish it had a little bit more of that. But I mean, I think it wrapped very well. Very well. There's nothing wrong with being a little bit of, uh, you know, you, you want to fucking judge the movies. You want to be a little critical. I get it. I mean, we're not just watching. I mean, you watch it. But as you guys all know, horror movies, it's almost like a different genre. It's like and people are like, oh, like no one's like, yeah, romance or woohoo, comedy. <laughs> but it's like fucking horror. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, brutal. I want to see people get killed. I want heads cut off. And at the end of the day, we're, we're patting kittens and we're, we're eating lollipops. Like, we're pretty good people. We just like that part, you know. We're eating kittens. 
or we're eating kittens and yeah, <laughs> we're killing people with lollipop hands. <laughs> So okay, and, okay. I don't know if you guys know or not, but I actually am from and live, and I went to the same high school as Mr. Stephen King. I live 45 minutes from Derry, Maine, Bangor, Maine, and uh, okay. I've been to the Pet Cemetery sites. I've been to Storm of the Century sites. I've been to the Drain. You guys dig King? You must dig him. You oh, yeah. see Pennywise. Yeah. yeah, of course. Of course. Respect, respect. I got a question for you guys, and we'll start with Bugsy since he's late. I'm going to throw him under the hut, uh, the hut lamp here. Um, what's your favorite Stephen King movie from a book, like a book into a movie? Like, well, I, I don't know how to read, so. Uh... <laughs> oh, sorry. Are you serious? No. Oh, you fucking guy! I'm laughing at him, and I'm like, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't laugh at these guys. I'm dyslexic. O's are fives, and twos are zeros, and eggs oh, are like fucking pork and bacon. And... I think it's Stephen King. I like the Langoliers. I never hear that spoken. I've been to the airport, Bangor Airport. That's where it was filmed, where they all came out and those things were coming down the hills. Holy like, shit, like, dude. I like the a lot, yeah. That's trippy shit. Yeah, yeah I like that. Cool. Fucking Bugsy. Love that name, by the way. Uh, Montavious, what do I say you? I, I have to go classic, and it's very cliche, but The Shining is is one I definitely enjoy. Um, just because like it's based off the Stanley Hotel, and I live here in Denver, and the mm -hmm. Stanley Hotel is like... 45 minutes up the street so dope i never been uh, yeah oh uh, that's killer maurice what about you man well i unfortunately unlike these two gentlemen i have to go with something that's like kind of near and dear to my heart so i'm gonna have to go with the dancing clown mr pennywise himself <laughs> ah, love it love it there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that man that's fucking cool that's cool well, so, you know, I, I have to go with Pennywise because, you know, back in the back when I was growing up as a kid, you know, I used to dress as a clown, dancing in school, literally the class clown as a clown, <laughs> dancing and being a fucking goof ass in school. So I have to name, uh, I have to name, um, Fat, Fat, Fat So the clown back in grade school. Oh, fuck them. Fuck punk kids and their <laughs> cocksucking. But that's cool. If you know what, fuck him. Go come back and I'll eat you. How's that, Fatso? Ah! You eat you, the motherfucker. Eat your spleen with some Chianti. Fava beans, motherfucker. <laughs> fuck bugs. Oh, yeah, that's cool, though. I love it because Tim Curry, the cold clown thing, scary as shit. And I love all that shit. Um, so, obviously, this is a paranormal show. I've kind of based it on history and paranormal. That's what I do. Y'all ever had any paranormal experiences, either acting in life or just. Oh, oh you know, yeah. <laughs> I think Bugsy said something. I said, I'm pretty sure I'm a ghost. <laughs> ah, this guy's a fucking crack up. You're good, Bugsy. You're so he's a comedian, a musician, and an actor. <laughs> Busted makes me feel good. What's that? I said, Busted makes me feel good. I love this cat. You're fucking. I like to hang out, I like to hang out with you, man. Go grab a beer or something. If I was in an inmate, I'd say after the show, let's go. <laughs> Seriously though, Bugsy, have you ever like recording studio or maybe a set? Have you ever think you've seen? No, absolutely. I've had a few experiences. You know, it's just life is paranormal at this point in time. Exactly. Amen. We got a believer. No, that's good. Most people chuckle at me sometimes because it's all all ghosties. But um, Montavious, what about you? You lit right up when I asked you. Huh? <laughs> I've. I have some crazy stories, like one dating back to when, you know, I had my first kid and there, there's a scenario that happened there. But more than that, uh, so there's a road here in Colorado that's called um, Riverdale. And if you Google this, uh, Riverdale is, look, there we go, Ouija. Oh, um, boy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Fucking guys holding on. He is a ghost. Don't ask me to I'm going to pull it out my ass. Uh, so, so Riverdale <laughs> is one of the most haunted roads in America. Um and usually I go out there late night, usually between two and three, and I record. I haven't dropped anything on my YouTube channel, but I got some Ooh. I got some crazy stuff. They say the Ooh, gates are your, down, so I try to walk. And, drop your YouTube for those listening. What's your, what's your okay. personal YouTube? Well, the underscore Empty Crypt is my YouTube channel. I do a bunch of guest interviews from Terrifier, from, uh, I don't know if you guys seen the movie, The Trinket Box with um, a court. Uh, 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 Croy A. Wright. So, I mean, all types of interviews and stuff. So, the underscore empty crypt. But, yes, Riverdale, you guys look it up. There is a bunch of crazy stories about one specific road here in Colorado. It is crazy. 
I'm glad I asked, man. Yeah, so you're into that stuff. And you're like me, like most people. I'm like, I'm at graveyards in the witching hour, 1 a.m., and I'm walking through with fucking sage and a joint, and I'm just like, what's up? Who wants to talk? Most people are at home in their blankets praying, and I'm just in the graveyard like, what's up? In these 1,600 graveyards where the fucking pilgrims are and shit. Near. I've been to Salem, man. Oh, that's a great question. Well, we're going to get Maurice Mar uh, first real quick. What about you, man? You seen anything haunted? I got to get the next. I got ADD, so I'm all over the place. Um, oh, so, oh, man. So, what about you? You ready to a ghost? Your kid's a demon, but besides a demon, have you seen a ghost? Just kidding. Let me tell you, let me tell you, uh, I experienced all the paranormal working on this damn script so far. I am currently uh 30, 30 pages in on the script, and this script is like it's, it's like you you really feel the presence of the evil in this film. You feel the presence of demons, you feel the presence of ghosts, you feel the aroma of just like so much evil in this film. Like you will feel watching this film is not your typical Friday the few film because you're gonna you're gonna go through the motion of like, damn, like, what the fuck kind of film am I fucking watching? Because for me, ah, I had I, night, I had nights, I had nights so far where I had sleep paralysis. I had nights so far where I'm in the house by myself and I'm hearing shit. I'm like, hold on, let me stop working on this script for like two, two or three nights. Like, I just can't. I need a break. Like, I'm feeling too much shit right now. Push pause on this one second. I'll come back to it probably like later on next week. So it's not based on real life, but yet real life is kind of influencing it, so to speak. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. That's pretty fucking rad. Oh, look at that. George is like, I love Pennywise. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah, cast. Uh, Carrie with Sissy Spaciac probably spelt that wrong. Um, yeah, whatever. That's pretty good. Can't go wrong with old school spookies. Yeah, I had the guy uh -huh. that did spookies on a couple weeks ago. Um, that was pretty neat. Um, also, shit, I totally spaced it. I forgot everything. I can't believe it. I forgot my hat. This truck, uh, this truck, this show is sponsored by actor trucker Donnie Green, who was the truck driver in Pet Cemetery that killed Gage. He sponsors the show with Bauer Green Trucking Logistics Incorporated, um, LLC, and also John Green uh, Trucking Company. Shoot, I can't believe I totally spaced it. I was excited to talk to you guys, and I totally fucking. I'm sponsored by the dude in Pet Cemetery that killed the kid, and I can't even fucking say it. I'm gonna get scolded now. Um, so, um, I'm gonna ask you this, Bugsy. Uh, give me two things. Give me a place that you love to go, that you go whenever you can, and, and a place that you gotta go before you kick the bucket and become a real ghost. Oh, that's give me a bucket list. You know what? That's funny about that. It's the same place. Shut the front door. That doesn't make club. sense. What? It's a strip club. <laughs> I knew I liked this guy. Nice. No, I'm kidding. But... Hey, the way you tipped, they're not even gonna know you're there or not there. It's gonna go up. Oh, must be must be Bugsy. There's no ones flying. <laughs> um, I like tropical environments, so I'll say maybe like Costa Rica, something like that. I love that place right now. I'm, I'm always okay. quiet, so yeah. I'll say that. That works for me. You, um, what, okay, well, I'm, I want to get back to you. I got another question, but real quick, Montavis, what about you, dude? What's your favorite place to go, and what's the place you want to go? Hmm. So, favorite place to go, I would have to say, right now, I, I'm really digging L.A. I'm really digging L.A. Uh, so, I like to go to L.A. whenever I can, but favorite place that I want to go before I kick the bucket, man, I have to say Tokyo. Oh, it's, the it's, food, the culture, it's, some spooky, just... it's some spooky stuff in Tokyo. Some spooky stuff. So is that the suicide I, forest or is that Japan? It, it, it's, it's Japan. It's but Japan. I would definitely have to do Tokyo and then maybe tour some of like the older, you know, haunted places within Japan. So yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I can see all of us walking around Romania, Dracula's, Dracula's castle there, Transylvania and shit. Right. Looking for Vlad the Impaler. Um Maurice, what about you, man? Where haven't you been? Where have you been? Man, I ain't really been nowhere, but um, <laughs> a place, a place, a place hey, he's, he's honest. Man, hey, <laughs> but uh, a place that I, uh, I I love to go to Florida. I got so much family down in Florida. I feel like I feel like my natural spirit, or like uh, you know, my uh, before you know another life. I was like born and raised in Florida, so I feel like I, my my roots is in Florida. But where I run to go before I kick the bucket, shit, I'm gonna say Japan. I'm so I'm so much of a geek, bro. Like. I'm into the anime. I'm into the Super Sentai. I love the uh, the Japanese culture. It's a cool so, culture. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. That's All cool. Right. That's, I, I like that. And Florida, man, maybe you're St. Augustine's soul. They say that was founded before Plymouth Rock. 
the lighthouse is in St. Augustine, Florida. Maybe you're, which I was going to bring you to that, and we're going to go with bugs. You go all the way around. Y'all ever been to New England, Maine? Any just any desire to come to Maine or have some lobster? Go to see Salem in Massachusetts. I've been I've been to Maine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? You, you like it? No. Do you remember? Or? I don't remember. No. Uh, what? Because I, 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 I was on my, I, I went to Maine once. Ah! It's memorable. Ah! That's fair. You might not have went to the right parts, though. Do you go to Portland or something? You went south, ah! probably. I think maybe the south. Yeah. Ah! You, go, you go up north, it's a little bit a little bit more chill. Uh, what about you, Montavious? Never been to New England, Maine, Mass? <laughs> Never. Believe it or not, I have not. I've been pretty much everywhere else. Uh, like, I went to New York like once, but I've never been like Maine and all that stuff. But that's I'm looking to change. <laughs> right, now Vermont, right now in Vermont, they're filming Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice too. Tim Curry's there. Fucking not Tim Curry. Tim Burton, Winona Ryder. They're all at East Point, Vermont, about three hours from me. I was so thinking about driving this weekend because they let you sit and watch it, and it's good. Uh, all of them there, dude. All of them right there, just walking around. I, I saw it on TikTok in the oh, It's not quite horror, but Beetlejuice is just classic. What the fuck? Beetlejuice right? is a classic. Yeah, anything not filmed in fucking a studio is neat. You know what I mean? Like, awesome. dude, I went to where Stephen King played the Reverend, where they buried Gage, the cemetery in Maine. You guys ever come to Maine? I'll bring you Mount Hope. It's the second oldest cemetery, uh, uh, garden cemetery in in America. That's not like a uh, you know like a family cemetery. Okay, okay. You know what I mean, it was put there in I think 1695 or something like that. So, it, it, yeah. there, Abraham Lincoln's vice president. So, isn't there some conventions in Maine or near that area, like horror conventions? They're having um, uh, the Silver Screen Con, which is put on by that rock band there that does horror movie songs all the time. I forget the name of them. Silver Lightning. Oh, Ice Nine. What is the Ice Nine? Kills? Ice Nine Kills. Yes, Ice Nine yeah. Kills. Silver Lightning. I'm way off. Uh, I'm not really into the screamo stuff, but whatever. But they're putting it on. I went last year. That's where I met Miko Hughes. I met Kane Hodder, as you saw. He got the machete to my throat. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can you put the machete to my throat? He's like, if I cut you, you're not going to sue. I go, fuck no. He signed it. He signed my mask, Kane Hodder. <laughs> nice. So I met Miko. I met I met um, the first Nick Castle, the first Mike Myers. And I met Mike McMurdy, Myers. the newest one. And I'm like, oh my god, what you guys know, you're a little kid in the candy store, these conventions. You guys dig that stuff? If I could pull some strings, I'd love to get you guys a, a table or something that one in New England for fall. For fall, what fall next year? Or oh, whatever, man. Yeah, I'm working on this year, next year, Hawthorne Hotel in New Hampshire uh, Massachusetts. They put conventions on and stuff, and you can go get a table, sell your shit. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, I bring a definitely touch based on that one after the show. Yes. I went to the sure. first Warren Con and Lorraine Warren Con in Connecticut. They had tables there. I met the people that played the nun. I saw the real Annabelle doll, the real one, and the movie prop one. Bonus. Um no. get to meet Tony Spare and Judy Warren. You know, pretty neat. You guys got to come up, man. People would yeah. love to see some of your shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm promoting I'm, a lot of your stuff. You guys are all in this new movie together, The Evil Three? Uh, no, no, not The Evil Three. The Evil Three is by another director now. Escape from Hell, they're in my film, Escape from Hell, yes. Evil Three, that was shot last year. We're, we're actually in post-production with that right now. So that'll probably be out by, like, mid-fall mid for that film. But um, Escape from Hell, yeah, we're in pre-production pre right now. So, um... Currently, we actually get ready to do um, a very mini photo shoot next month with uh, three three of my actors that's local here in Chicago. Also, it'll be during Flashback Weekend. So I have Montavious out here with me as well. So I hope nice. we get to kick, kick the bobo as well with that. Um, but yeah, Escape from Hell, it is in pre-production right now. So we're I'm anticipating to do the promo, shoot the promo trailer next, either ne no, next summer for sure. It'll be it'll be proceeding in my gala that I'm gonna have June eighth of next year. Wow! So you so usually the inside scoop, directing, and all this stuff. It's not just like oh, shoot a movie in three months. No, there's a lot of work that goes into this shit. Especially when you're underground, you got to promote and do it all DIY. It's like you got. That's not exactly um, Bugsy. What about you? You've been in this business a long time, my friend. Um, do you see any progression since you've been in it? Do you see things a little bit easier now? Is it harder with technology? You think? Uh pertaining to what like editing things of that sort yeah or, just all that good shit and like i said i know you can't fucking read but i mean if you could do you think it'd be easier <laughs> um not really makes it difficult but I'm, I'm more of a practical effects guy i don't i'm not big on cgi i like practical you know building i like stuff. that i like that answer that's dope i like the old school oh. approach it's more real to me you can tell yeah. something cgi dude right bugsy you can tell yeah, or yeah, maybe you, you guys know so feel into it 
I, I think it a little, you lose a little bit of terror with it. That's why I say it's hard to get scared of because you really you, your mind switches off when you're watching certain things, especially if you're behind the camera and you know in front of the camera. You kind of get acclimated to you like, yeah, okay, that's cool, but it doesn't have that same effect in the chest. That feeling, that heart, yeah, man. Oh man, I'm glad you came on, man. You're a funny dude. You're all great dudes. I'm glad. And you guys are all kind of not even really around each other, correct? I mean, you don't not have to say all. exactly where you're from, but you guys are in different states, it seems like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's, like, it's like, you know, it's like Montavious is like, he's like the Midwest Coast kind of guy. Bugsy is the East Coast, and I'm the, the legit Midwest guy. What about Deja? She didn't come on, actress Deja. Uh, she's also, she is, um... She's the uh, Midwest kind of girl. She's from, I believe she's from Cali. No, 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 no. She's from Nevada. No shit. Wow. No kidding. Hey, she's not the first girl to stand me up, so I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, man, uh, we got about a good half hour left, man. We're just kind of shooting the breeze here with a lot of my, you guys can see we have about 10 people watching right now. We got Bugsy Hoffa, who's an actor, musician, all around comedian, pretty good dude, pretty good, good cracking up here. Montavious Parker, who's um, an actor and I guess uh, a director of sorts. We kind of do your own directing, I guess, right? I mean, exploration at least. No, not really. I'm just podcaster, cameraman, con goer. Not, I wouldn't even consider myself an actor. I, I just, I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan that likes to be involved, and that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> That's been killed on camera. Hello. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, here, here's a here's a uh, here's an awesome fun fact for uh, hello, Mr. Montavious Parker. So Montavious is um is playing a deputy in my film who has yes, his, uh, bring that up. who yes. has an encounter with Jason. So he has this moment where he encounters Jason in the film. I'm not gonna spoil too much about it. But Does um, he get the suit. You get the badge and the whole nine, like the whole. Oh fucking- man. So uh, the costumes and the props, dude. That's coming from an actual police uniform store here in Chicago. That's cool. I think so. My favorite is gonna feel for what it's like to wear an actual Chicago well, CPD uniform, basically. But it's not Whoa. CPD uniform because I can't use it. But um, it's close to a CPD uniform. I mean, and, I mean, and, and this is the first time I'm, I'm hearing about this too, by the way, because I know we've been in contact, just kind of going over you know, what the roles will be. So I'm actually just finding out that I will be playing a deputy, man. I'm, you know, got to get into shape, do some weights or something so I can fit it. <laughs> That's a cool feeling, man. I wish I could experience that. I got to, I want to go re around you guys just so you guys can kill me in any way. I, I'd love to be in a film to die. That would be fucking great. If you ever need an extra dude. Um, Wow. Pretty wild. Uh, Bugsy, what's Bugsy's role in this? You want to tell everybody? So, uh, Bugsy is playing the role of Miko's grave. Uh, Mikos, the ass is uh, the actual the ass is actually silent, but it's Miko. So, but Mikos, but um, he's playing a 35 year old botanist who is the groundskeeper over at Camp Crystal Lake. Now, fun fact: so we we hear Crystal Lake so much in any film, any fan film. We had Camp Forest Green and part what was it part seven? So for me, I decided to take the new look and go with a new name for it. So it's not calling it Camp Crystal Lake. I'm calling it camp flashpoint lake so okay. yep. uh miko's graves is a uh, miko's graves they get a bugsy hoffa is the groundskeeper over at new flash of uh, camp flash camp flashpoint lake and um he's basically the present day or new iteration of crazy ralph so oh crazy so ralph cra- yeah I, he's not so much crazy though he has a more common sense that there is an evil presence at, at this new ca- at this campsite. It's out for revenge, and um, oh. he's one of the new counselors. You guys really don't want to be here. I recommend you guys to leave. But of course, the new counselors are like, "Hey, fuck that! We're here to make money. We're gonna ignore you. You're a little bit crazy." But no, Miko's Graves is actually the one who's like, you know, really trying to let them know, "Hey, you guys got to get the fuck." out of here. Because you <laughs> I can see Bugsy doing that in real life. What a great role. Yeah, you, don't can't like, go, you don't have to go home and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I can see Bugsy doing that in real life. He does play bluegrass. It fits right in. He's a camp counselor. Exactly. That's who's... <laughs> 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 Shit. I love my sister. Hey, we're checking in, Michael. What is up, Michael? Thanks yeah, for yeah, checking yeah. in, my friend. Yo, yo. Uh, also, so, yeah. Chicken. 
That's fucking so cool, here, man. Here's the, here's the major fun fact that I know I really, <laughs> I'll tell anybody that's in any of the podcast shows. So as far as any of the A-listers besides Bugsy that we have on the production, we also have Beatrice Bopley, who is playing I'm not only... Her. Not only is she playing Pamela Voorhees, she is playing her old-time favorite role as Amanda Kruger. It's Freddie's fucking mom. She's my guest of the Freddy's month. Freddie's fucking mom. She's my guest of the month. I didn't expose it yet, but I messaged her on Facebook. I had Sandy Johnson on uh, two months ago, Mike Myers' sister, who was in Playboy. She was amazing. And, that opened, and then I had Walter Fellin, who played Dr. Satan in Rob Zombies. Now you fucking guys. And now I got her in a couple weeks. You got her in your movie. Shit. I think I saw that. Sorry, I'm yeah. getting a boner. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Freddie's mom is Jason's mom. Plot twist. That yeah, doesn't make sense. They're brothers. <laughs> fun story though. Um, I went to Crypticon KC and yeah, yeah. Beatrice actually talked about how excited she was for you know Escape from Hell to be able to repraise her role as Amanda Kruger and be Pamela Voorhees in the same film. So I mean, this is gonna be a good one. So. All you guys is looking and watching. You definitely, definitely want to keep up with this. For oh, sure. I'm gonna keep up. I want to be some sort of fun helper, whatever I can do, dude. I can't wait to see Bugsy in a little fucking like a park ranger uniform with a whistle or something, right? I don't wear clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking yeah. love this. You my spirit animal, Bugsy. My spirit ghost. <laughs> Shit. Pulls out a fucking Ouija board. Who is this guy? What did you do to me, Maurice? Yeah, bring on Bugsy. He says, okay. <laughs> oh wait! So here's a fun fact for all of you gentlemen. A fun fact I have not revealed to nobody yet. So one of the scenes I actually worked on last week in the film, it incorporates you know every all of the everyone being in hell. So before I even talk about that part, let me just give a shout out to Peter Anthony who directed Rose Blood, who also helped out with the Fall of Camp Blood. Um, Rose Blood, his his film. So Rose Blood has a huge part. To play in Escape from Hell because in my film, we start off in the year of 18. Oh, I'm sorry, not 18. <laughs> I'm thinking about goddamn 18th century shit. Historical century. shit. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna say 1989. We're preceding the events of you guys weren't born yet. She was a young girl. Well, Bugsy exactly. we were. Well, Bugsy was, yeah. <laughs> um, 79. 84. So we, so we saw the film called the year of 1989. Room. So we 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 go through two periods that we time we time jump from 1989 to 1993, which was Adam Marcus's Jason Goes to Hell, and then we time jump to present day 2024 because that's when we're going to be filming. That's when the film takes place. So um, huge shout out to um, New Blood, Rose Blood, and Jason Goes to Hell. Those are the three films that the reason why actually Rose Blood. But those are the three films that plays a huge role into my film, Escape from Hell. But I'm paying de definite homage to Adam Marcus's Jason Ghost. And that's the least film that everyone hates in the F-13 franchise. But to me, hell, there's so many ways how you can go with that. Like, Jason Goes to Hell. What happens, you know, what happens in hell? That's the part that we don't know. So in part of my film, I show what happens while Jason is in hell. And why he escaped from hell. Oh, because in Freddy vs. Jason, Freddy kind of wakes him up from hell, but you don't see what the fuck he's doing. For, you're exactly. kind of filling the gap. I Because I noticed with the flyer, and I'm getting excited because I love Jason. I was him for Halloween for like five years straight. Definitely my favorite killer of all time. Real or fake. H.H. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Holmes is probably my real favorite, real one. But um, the flames that you have in the flyer represent him in hell. Remember when they go in the beginning and the girl's in the shower and then they go and the FBI goes, light them up and they all shoot them. And the guy goes, I don't think so. And then that was it. What a great, oh, I can't wait to see it. Number one fanboy now. God damn it. I'm going to be talking to you guys every day like a little teeny bopper. Is it not only, not only Bugsy? that. Hi, Bugsy. Any more jokes for me? <laughs> not only friends, that, right? there's, there's more. There's more because in that in that particular scene, that we, the, uh, the hell scene that we see, we only not only do we see Jason Voorhees, not only do we see Pamela Voorhees, we see all of the iconic killers that we grew up knowing and love. So that's Michael Myers, Pennywise, Candyman, um, Mary, Bloody Mary, Carrie, 
Um, you guys listening, shit. everybody out there listening, you, can you hear what Maurice is saying right now? This is huge. Maurice, when's the fucking drop date? 2023, 24? Well, like I said, by, uh, we're filming late summer next year, so the actual premiere won't be uh, until 2025. So it's a little bit of a gap with that. But I want to make sure I film all of this shit right because guess what? I'm a, by me being a Virgo and Bugsy understands this the most. Like, one thing about us, uh, I can say for myself, I know I'm a pro- perfectionist. I like to make sure I'm doing this shit right. And then the film, I'm going to shoot the film in 6K. So that's one thing about that off back over right there. Let me Whoa. try to see. Oh, mouth of the floor. And hey, everything's every, every worth day. waiting for, man. This is killer. I can't wait to see where the progression goes. Because y'all are literally, like, Marie, uh, Montavious, you're flying out or going out to see him soon to start this, right? Same thing with Bugsy. It's even. Yeah, so we're, we're, we'll be meeting up here soon within the next few weeks to kind of just like wow. me, like mix and mingle with some of the some of the local cast there in in the Chicago area, just so we can start building a uh, um you know a, a bond because I mean just like Maurice just said, this is going to be an an, el- an epic film uh, that I think is be very daunting on the body and on people's minds. So we're going to go ahead and build that corrupt that camaraderie or early that way going into filming is smooth selling. So, Oh, I'm so glad I'm friends with you. Bugsy's going to accept my friend request, but I'm so glad I'm friends with you too. Wait, and I, can see it. I said it to you yesterday. I think it was musician. It was musician Bugsy Hoffa. So I don't know if it's a fan page or like a yeah, like page. I, I to that one. Just we'll, If we'll, not we'll, hit up Maurice, yeah. he'll fucking hook you up. Yeah, we'll um, Maurice. I, I think the thing too, sorry, I don't mean to just cut you go off. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, because I know there's a lot of Friday the 13th fan films out there. So mm-hmm. I just you know, people to know that this isn't going to be one of those, you know, just a, a redo of one of those fan films or one of the, this is going to be something of its own and something that's never been seen or done before. So everybody stay tuned, stay locked in. Uh, it's going to be yeah. good. It's not like, yeah, it's not like it's a YouTube special. This is legit going to be going to DVD. It's going to be fucking, I can't, honestly, I can't wait. Um, I'm excited. <laughs> um, so let me see. Uh, sending good vibes. My girlfriend says, hope everything goes well with the production, with the shooting. Sorry, it's been a little slow. Um, there are still some laughs, even on times that they don't. Yeah, they'll get along. What a crew. You guys are all pretty. You guys bond well. Um, so Maurice, man, between being a father, being a producer, being a writer, a director, the whole night, an actor, your plate's full. What do you do to relax? Do you find any time to sit back and watch a movie or just fucking go tanning or <laughs> I, I don't know like bowling whatever <laughs> man i promise you like if i'm not like my my downtime is really when i'm at work but when i'm at home it's like you know straight focusing on keeping him occupied to take care of him it's bedtime so it's, really, so, it's bedtime yeah so i i i i'll pretty much work i work overnight so I'll, i do my best work when i'm at work on overnight schedule so i'm getting everything done while everybody else is leaving sleeping partying or doing whatever they do best <laughs> um, but yeah, um, for uh, my personal downtime, like, like, like my Tavius, I go to uh, oh, what the kid do? Unplug him? Is this staring contest? Because I'm gonna lose, man. I think, just... I think it's like Mark. All right, we'll get back. Um, okay, Montavious, we'll get back to him. What about you, my friend? What do you do for relaxing besides your killer collection and back you? Man, relaxing. Uh, I watch movies, man. I'm a I'm a movie connoisseur. So anytime where I'm not like operating um or mine and my wife's uh company or at my regular nine to five or spending time with my kids, man, I'm 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 in this dungeon right here, just being a student of the arts, man. I'm watching film and different angles on how to capture film. Uh, you know, just Mark. like I said, movie movies. So that's that's basically what I do in my spare time, and I travel. All over the country for different conventions. So, oh, all right, he'll be back. No, that's cool. That's the way I am. I like to look for sites. I go to anywhere from where, like, um, in Portsmouth, there's the Chameleon Killer who buried four people in barrels, and I went there to go see their grave site. I try to look up historical sites. I go to like where in Connecticut, where the birthplace of the hamburger was in 1895. Yep. Use lunch. So I do that shit, but then I watch movies, and I'm like, if I haven't seen that, I'm like, fucking Tubi, show me something. What do you got? And it's a new one. Um, so yeah, it seems like you're always on the go. Your brain's going to always be moving, which I think is a good thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Bugsy, what say you besides writing one-liners, you motherfucker? What do you do to relax, my homie? <laughs> now, I'm a gamer at the same time, too, so I'm gaming a lot in my spare time. Gamer, huh? Yeah. What's your go-to? Fighting games. Uh, 
Right now it's been Street Fighter Six. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm really getting Tekken. So, oh, Haliuskis, Haliuskis. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about movies? You must chill out, watch them too. You ever watch any of your old stuff, the Cosby Show and stuff like that? You ever watch any of your old roles for the hell of it? Yeah, so uh, what I do, I just I take screenshots every so often. I send it to girls. <laughs> I fucking, I fucking love this guy, dude. I would literally pay to hang out with you if I could. <laughs> you yeah, fucking I'm are awesome. awesome as well. So that's, I'm just like, I'm, I'm always in between something. No pun intended. There we go. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> you go in, there's two girls in there, and he's always between something, right? <laughs> yeah, my bad. Hello. Wi-Fi crashed. Wi-Fi crashed. That's all right, Maurice, dude. It happens, dude. I figured your kid probably ripped it out of the wall. You think we're all good. My, I got people on here sometimes. Their pet skunks get in the way. Their pet turtles. and You, know, you name it. So it's all good. It's un- uncensored here. We got about 10, 15 minutes left. We can go a little bit over. Um, you guys got anything for me? Any questions for me? I usually ask my guests if they got a question for me. They usually go, yeah, oh. I definitely, I definitely got one for you. Uh, now, I mean, with your podcast and all that stuff, man, what like what got you into doing, you know, a podcast? Ooh, my man. Um, I'm a talker, as you can tell. That's why I'm good at this. So I'm going to tell you the truth because I don't bullshit. I got no reason. Besides Donnie giving me like fucking 500 bucks to sponsor me for a year, dude, I don't get sponsored. And he don't give a shit. <laughs> so um, I tell it like it is, dude. Um, my mom died uh, three months after I spent all night in Lizzie Borden's house in 2019. I feel like she cursed it. But my mom died unexpectedly. Um, I lost my shit bad and I ended up being homeless. I lost my job and I lived in an RV, like an RV camper in the back of a flea market in Maine for about two and a half years with no power. I used to shit in the snow banks during the winter and during the summer, of course, just shit in the woods. But I, I got through with DoorDash and I did my thing. And then I was a guest because I still obviously suicidal thoughts, but it's getting past that, looking into inspiration, like going to where Hubie Halloween was filmed with Adam Sandler, going to where Casper the Friendly Ghost was filmed in Maine. All this stuff, it started giving me a purpose, so to speak. And of course, I got my girlfriend now. So then I was a guest on a show, Paranormal King Radio Network, on a regular radio show, not visual. And the dude ate it up, told me I was a star, you're a talker, you know your stuff because I can retain information. Um, I got in a car accident shortly after that. I got hit in a head-on collision. I died for 38 seconds. They brought me back. Oh, go ahead. I was, I was in an accident. And I died. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah I saw. Um, it's a different feeling when you come back, isn't it? Especially when half your family and friends don't visit you in the hospital. You're like, that was my funeral. <laughs> yeah, no one would show up. You start to realize who the fuck was there when you die. I'm gonna cry. I'm good. <laughs> so long story short, dude. I've made this my life. I'm going to be 44 in September. Um, my girlfriend's got two kids. I don't have any. I'm with her for five years now. And I said, fuck it. I started doing the radio show, Paranormal uh, King Radio. I did Historically Haunted Show. And I had Tony Spera on there, Jeff Mudgett, who was H.H. Holmes' great-great-grandson, America's first serial killer. I've had all these people on, zoologists that look for a fucking Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. I look for UFO people. No, I'll watch that tomorrow. All that stuff. And then I said, someone goes, why don't you do a podcast? I go, why not? So I started doing it. And I started doing this now. I'm on my third year. And then I started getting $10 a week for sponsors. And then Donnie goes, I'll sponsor you the whole fucking year. He gave me a hat, stickers, the whole nine. He turns out he's a truck driver in Pet Cemetery. And I'm like, I should have been dead and buried three years ago. And now I own my own home right in the base of Mount Katahdin with the Appalachian Trail. It goes right by, right by Bangor, Maine. I pay 20 grand for a trailer. I pay $255 a month lot rent. I have two vehicles I own. A podcast that's successful, a YouTube channel that's good, and fucking hey, man, like I don't know, I don't know if I answered your question, but long story short is, I like to talk to people, and I figured I could be dead, but now I know Montavious Parker, like I feel like I know him a lot better than I did. A week we ate ago. some grand yeah. practice. I know Bugsy, and I know not to trust a hundred percent of what he says, but it's all good because he's a funny shit. And I know Maurice tried to get him when his kids passed out or on on NyQuil or something. But other than that, you could talk to Maurice. And I get to know new people. And next thing you know, I'm talking to Sandy Johnson and these people from these horror movies. And then I'm talking to you fucking cats who I've never met. Probably will never meet. But I get to know you. And I don't know, man, if that answered your question. But it's a fun deal. I get high. And I talk to people every week. And uh, I learned a bunch of cool shit. Because you've taught me so much. All of you have, dude. And uh, I'm blessed for knowing that. Man, that that's that that's beautiful. It's kind of strange ah. in a way how people, some people have like you know a negative outlook on horror, but like you know it kind of saved you in a way. I think it kind of saved all of us to a certain extent. I mean, Bugsy's ha- had a career, you know, from early on, but still, you know, he's a part of the horror genre now. So, I mean, it's a beautiful thing, man. It well, is. I think my mom growing up 
she she I remember I'll never forget it. And this is no bullshit. My stepfather went hunting in Maine. I was about nine, eight, nine years old. And it's funny, who mentioned the shining? Mom, I passed out. My mom was watching the shining. I woke up and she and I go, What are you watching? It was the shining, and the two girls told me hands, the elevator of blood. My first horror movie experience. She goes, You're gonna go to the same school as Stephen King. He went to Lisbon High School, he grew up in Durham, and that was it. I had to watch it all. Texas Chainsaw, fucking killer clowns from outer space, fucking Leatherface, like wow, and all. And then you watch other movies, and it's great. But the passion. Then you meet the folks like you guys at conventions that do this stuff, and it's almost like heavy metal, which I like myself. But I love rap. I love hardcore. I love all that shit. But there's a certain passion, and I think with with horror movies, there's a certain moose. Like we just love to dress up. People show up with light bulbs sticking out of their heads. Hey guys, they're at a convention. They got a blood sticking out. So I think it's cool. And my mom got me into that. She got me into all that shit. And I think that really is the bond we got and i'm not trying to cut you guys off but i think that's what bonds us all we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for fucking jason Voorhees. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. so. um, well, i don't know anyway been, yeah i digress i know i talked too long about my, your answer there but i wanted to tell you guys a little bit about me and uh i don't have to do this i could literally be like i'm fucking done tomorrow even though donnie sponsors me but I like to talk to people i have no reason to kiss any of your asses but i want to get to know you because life's too short dude I every week like Bugsy, real quick, if you don't mind, what happened to you, my brother? What happened to you? And if you don't mind talking. Oh yeah, it was, it was, I was in a, I was hit by a truck. Damn. So I got like lots of scars, things of that sort. Hit by a truck on purpose or like an accidental? I think it was playing chicken. I lost. Oh my fucking god, dude! <laughs> See, I don't know if he's being serious or. I, 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 I want to believe him because that's something kind of weird to laugh about, but at the same time, he's a sick fuck, so he could be joking, but I think he's real. Is that real, Bugsy? Don't bullshit me. It's okay, I'm, I'm going to say it's real. I'm going to say it's real on this one. That's horrific, my friend. I'm glad you're with us still. Did you feel anything during it or after? Did you feel a certain connection or loss or anything weird? Oh, yeah, actually, I thought the lapse in time. I thought it was three years. It was only 30 minutes. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have a amnesia. But I did remember I had like a very long dream that I do remember. Do you have like a sleep paralysis now? Do you wake up uncomfortable or nightmares or anything silly? No. Sleep paralysis doesn't really affect me too much. Maurice, you listening? He just told you a horror movie. He just told you a horror movie. Write that shit down. Buy the rights off him. (laughs) It's fucking maximum overdrive come to life, for Christ's sake. Maximum overdrive. Fucking the Green Goblin truck. Oh, sending all the good vibes. Sorry, guys. I'm not. I'm paying attention. Haunted Souls Paranormal. Hello, hello. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jewel, the horror community is such a great group. Yeah. And I think that ties with, with the history and the paranormal. Of course, we're up in Maine. Um, we got three minutes left, but they give me a good half hour after. I know Maurice had to go 40 minutes into it, but he's still here. If you guys want to kick it another five, 10 minutes, we can. I'm available. Ah, I love yeah. your attitude. Maurice, where are you now? You outside trying to avoid the kid? Go hide and seek, uh, little Timmy. He's fucking out back. <laughs> no, his, uh, his grandma actually just came back. I am. I'm, I'm literally leaving out for work. Oh, you are really leaving. If you're going to go, that's cool. I'll chat with these cats and we'll have to get us. No, no, a, a I'm, good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good to go. I'm good to hang. He's having fun. He didn't know how to take me at first. And I was like, this fucking white guy is cool. Fuck him. We'll talk to him. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, what do you guys like? Um, shit, let's do something fun. Let's do something fun. What you guys oh, just go to for food, man? What you go to before, like, say you got a big script coming up or you got some sort of convention. Do you guys get like a big pizza, a big buffet, seafood? Bugsy, you want to you wanna answer first? Oh, I, the thing is, I don't eat food. I'm on a, a photosynthesis diet. See, now he's bullshitting. That's a bullshit <laughs> lie because he'd be dead. You have to eat to survive unless you're a ghost, which he's way I'm not- lost now. He's a ghost. <laughs> I'm too stoned for this. I should be smoking during my podcast because of you. <laughs> Fucking main bud. So, bu- so Bugsy, when you do when you do digest human Sunlight. organisms of Water. food or whatever, <laughs> he's a hard one to interview. This guy. <laughs> Come on, Bugsy. I don't eat. I, I'm, I'm serious. Okay, barbecue. Maurice, what say you? <laughs> you say you say what do I like to eat? Yeah, what you go to, like, say, if you're getting psyched, like, you just, you're like, I just wrote a nice fucking script, or I just got done a, a shot that I really like. What do you celebrate? There's got to be something, man. Man, look at him. I'm going to tell y'all this. So y'all, y'all are not Chicago natives, right? But when y'all come to Chicago, y'all got to go to this restaurant called Portillo's Hot Dogs out here. 
Italian beef, man. The Italian beef subs are worth it, man. Like every well, yeah. man, twelve dollars. You got you got it. You got to get the big beef from a, from Brazil. You got to get the big beef. The from big D. What a lot. No, the big big beef. Not big beef. Oh, oh, oh there's oh, a big yeah, D. I go, okay. <laughs> you got to get a large, large order of fries, large order of fries, and large sprite. Oh man, just fucking kiss, man. I got, I get, I get that every time I celebrate. I go to Brazil every time. This fucking guy's not going to work. He's going there right now. Twenty bucks. He comes right. back with napkins. Oh yeah, work this <laughs> hard. <laughs> All right, Montavious, what you got for me? I think for me, my go-to man. Uh, since I'm 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 in Denver, you know, I do as the natives do. I'm a green chili type of guy. So like, I love like burritos, tacos. That's gonna be my. Gotta get the cheese fries. Okay, there we go. Um, oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm a taco type of dude. I love tacos, but n- not not the ground beef tacos. I'm talking about the actual, you know, asada. You know. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, dude. Pink tacos, the pink ones. We get it. Um, yeah. So yeah, and Bugsy's Bugsy's <laughs> gonna take all those answers and say he agrees to all of them because he fucking eats. Come on, this guy just had a fucking pizza before I came on. Um, Bugsy, uh, <laughs> Bugsy, Maurice, you guys got any questions for me so I can? Kill the 20 minutes. Oh, oh, so oh, look at Pennywise. Look how sexy he looks with his red buttons. Freddy right. mask. Oh. Uh, Pennywise. I like that. I went to the drain, the storm drain. It's on Jackson Street. It's right down the street from his house in Bangor. And they say that's where he got the inspiration for it. Because you see Jackson Street in both its movies in the beginning when, when Georgia gets right, beaten right, by right. the <laughs> Fucking horror, man. Hey, um, wasn't Troll also filmed in Maine? What well, Troll? I think it's called Troll. Troll's uh, a good movie, wasn't was it? That, is that a Netflix so, series movie? No, no, no. It's an old. It's an older movie. Um, Creep Show Two was scenes of Creep Show Two. The Hitchhiker. The town was Goblin Backwards. Oh, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. It's a, it's a, it's a fairly older horror movie, but I think that took place in Maine. Really? I'll have to look it up. I know a little bit of Route 66 does William Shatner, who the Halloween Mike Myers masters fashioned, uh, fashioned after, of course. Yeah, yep. yeah, that was. My goal this summer, still kind of early, I still could go almost there, but I used to get to Martha's Vineyard where they filmed Jaws. The bridges there, the breakaway, and the beach where the kids got killed. <laughs> Poor people are fucked. We're a different breed. <laughs> Um, so hey man, I took an hour of you guys this time. Do you guys want to go or do you want to just keep shooting the shit? I feel like I, I always get to the point where I can I do you gotta go? So I'm gonna go ahead and hop off. I'm about to go okay. eat dinner with the family. So you guys stay blessed and uh Montavious, if I ever ask you for a one-on-one of interview in a couple months, would you be game if I message you oh, and maybe there's like a I'm here. I'm here. All, all I day. always I get a group and then I digest and I'm like, I could talk to all you guys. That goes to all you. Uh, Bugsy mm-hmm. too. We could shoot the shit for an hour. Um, Maurice, maybe in the future, a couple months around Halloween time, get you guys back on singly. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, That's yeah. Good. Good. All right, you guys have a good night. All right. All right. Uh, this will be up on all YouTube right. tomorrow. Historically haunted podcast right on YouTube. Be sure to check these cats out. Everybody says have a good night. Thank you guys. Um, Montavious Parker, Bugsy Offa, and Maurice McCoy Jr. and you know Deja, but whatever the fuck, we'll get her next time. Um,